<clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Um, here's the Toro Tremor. Uh, you saw the video I did the rebuild. Well, today's going to be a July uh, update video. Uh, for the equipment you have not seen, but So, we'll start off with this that I recently got about a week ago. It is a Honda HOC 216 HSA with a Honda GHV 160 engine on a commercial deck. Well, this is a commercial mower. It's got hydrostatic transmission, blade back clutch. I'm gonna pay $275 for it. It does look pretty beat up, but this thing runs. Uh, as you can see, Right there, where's the little covers off? Well, I have this apart, and the cover for this drive shaft, and this is a drive shaft, because uh, the day I first brought it uh, home with me, only used once. Uh, somehow the self part stopped working until the next day, and I'm guessing because the pin off the drive shaft just came out, and I guess that was the problem. So. I tried to fix the self pulled on the drive shaft. I put a little nails to find out, and that sure enough was the problem. So I have to get a roller pin for it if I want to use the self pulled to improve them back together. So, yeah, uh, this thing still runs. I'm impressed, and it runs pretty good, and the idle's real nice. So, uh, I will try and show you, uh, I might film a long time video of maybe one of my clients' houses, uh, and I'll feature this more. And also, yesterday I got this for free. A Honda HHT35S four-stroke trimmer. My very first four-stroke trimmer I've ever owned. It is pretty beat up. And this is a GH35 Honda four-stroke engine, which means it is a 35 CC, well, it says 36 right there. Uh, sorry, it has a lot of tape on it. That's why the previous owner put a lot of tape on it because it's uh, missing a bolt. I'll show you the years. The year, it is a 2012 model, so this is nine years old. Uh, it is pretty beat up because the only thing that it needs is a new trimmer head, which I'm going to be getting the speed feed head later today on Depot, hopefully. And this thing actually runs. It actually runs. I'm pretty impressed. Uh, I'm gonna check for you for a in a couple of minutes, but uh, spark plug, bro. I haven't checked the spark plug yet because it's inside this cover, and you know, I don't want to know undo this tape and all that because otherwise, if I'm gonna use it, I have to put a bolt on there, so I'll have to check the spark plug last. Um, yeah, I'm impressed this thing actually runs and. Yeah, it's a 35cc engine. This thing weighs about uh, 15 pounds. It's pretty heavy, but I will have to get a shoulder harness for it. I'm thinking about, I was actually thinking about getting a backpack shoulder harness, but it turns out when I felt the weight, I guess I pr probably don't need one. I guess I probably just need, you know, like a little uh, single harness, like... This right here, that's on my steel, like this 55 oil, like that. And also, also got that for free, a oh, Red Mats, uh, HTZ2400 Hedge Trimmer from Zenova Company. And this is a gas-powered Hedge Trimmer. Uh, I just want to show you how dirty this thing is this thing when I first looked at it, it is so so dirty, right? I don't know if you can see this, but this is all covered in dirt, and the carburetor is covered in thick, thick dirt. Thick pieces of dirt and this thing is just so clogged up and dirty and it is it's missing an air filter and a cover. The choke knob somehow seems to be broken. 
What's crazy is that the motor still turns over. Here's in the stop position. The motor. Yeah. Ooh. The motor actually turns over and it's, as I can feel, has good compression. And it is missing some fuel lines on the gas tank because I think there's supposed to be a grommet uh, right here. So, yeah, it's uh, missing a grommet on the fuel lines. I could try and fix this thing up, but I'm not going to yet. So, anyway, uh, that was just a little update video. Uh, he's raining out here today, as you can see. But, uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, so, my dirt forces are doing pretty good now. Um, 10 by 50 is still running great. Uh, the only thing it doesn't, uh, do when you release the bale is that it doesn't, uh, shut off when you release it, so... I have to get a good use flywheel or what i'm thinking about is that i'm gonna switch over the 10 p 2 piece flywheel and put it on there to see if that would solve the problem if it does then i know i would have to get a good use flywheel because a brand new one is a hundred dollars and i do not want to pay a hundred dollars for the 10 50 flywheel because i hate to tell you this but you will not believe what the total number of parts or how much I spent on the 10323. So for the 10323, I'll tell you this. I paid $150 used uh, back four years ago. Uh, on February 11th of 2017. I may have told you that in my very first Lombardy video that I posted four years ago, maybe. I don't really know. But anyway, I, uh, I bought it four years ago for $150. And then three or four years later until now, I spent so much money on parts. Most expensive part I paid was the good use short block for $80. Then plus an extra $20 or $25 for the new oil seals and the gasket maker for the block house. So that was around $100 or $105 total. So yeah, that was the most expensive. Um, I spent probably three hundred dollars total parts no the total cost of parts i put in to that 10 g 3 it's ridiculous how much i put in i put three brand new cables in it a new self propelled cable that i installed recently a few months ago uh last year i installed a new throttle cable and a brake cable um Yep, brand new carburetor, brand new gaskets for the engine, just the exhaust gasket, muffler gasket. Um, new recoil, well, good used recoil storage shroud that's on there right now. Um, what else have I done? Uh, last year I put a brand new air filter in it, I believe. Yeah, I might have put a brand new air filter in it. Uh, I did put a brand new spark plug in it last year, but... The NGK BPM R4A for a spark plug is now on my 10550, which means now 323 is on its uh, original. Well, it's not the original spark plug, but it's it's close, but just the different number. But it's a NGK BPM 6A is what's on there now. That was the spark plug that was on there for from about four years ago when I first bought it, so... Yeah, I just, I am just shot. I have spent $300 total of parts. I am not even joking. $300, like $300 worth of parts on the 323. It's just ridiculous that I've spent so much money on this thing. What's crazy is that I never even had to change the ignition coil because the ignition coil... It's still good, and I heard the Duraforce ignition coils were the most common problem for these, but luckily I never had a problem with these two. My 10323 is 18 years old, the 10550 Duraforce is 17 years old, 2004 and 2003.
What's crazy is that this 1032-3 probably has to be the indestructible Duraforce since the 03. It kind of reminds me of like my Toro, which is from 2003. So the 1032-3 Duraforce can be called indestructible Duraforce versus the indestructible Toro. <laughs> I'm just making this up. So, yeah. So, that was just an update video on my two Hondas and the Red Match demo. I will try and give you guys Cold Start on one of these and I'll feature them. Hopefully whenever I get a new trimmer here for the Honda and sometime later get a bolt and trim this thing up and the same thing for this. I just have to get a roller pin for the HOC 216 because uh, I don't want to use the nail because otherwise it might be stuck with the silk pearl and it won't be. Uh working again so luckily for me that was the biggest problem thank goodness that drive shaft that came off the engine thankfully it was the biggest problem because i thought sure i was about to take it back to the guy that i bought it from but no good thing i knew that was the issue and the transmission is still good has transmission fluid the only thing i hate is that it's got transmission fluid in this it's just like a car so this thing is pretty much like i would take like a i would say maybe like a Let's just take like a Corvette or a Nissan, whatever. Let's just say, for example, that any other car truck has transmission fluid, valves, camshaft, uh, cruise control, transmission, uh, oil sumps, and yeah. This Honda trimmer actually has a, yeah, but since this does have valves, uh, oil sump, this trimmer has a camshaft. The steel FC91 Edger Formix engine has a, it's a, it's a Formix engine, but it uses two-stroke gas for lubrication. So, which means this has no oil sumps or that, but it does have valves. What is stupid is that it's a two-stroke engine. You have to mix the oil and gas. And then adjust the valves. It's crazy, but these things just sound too good. One thing I do like about this Honda is that I like it the way you can feather the throttle when I was revving it. It uh, actually lets you feather the throttle. And if it's still four minutes, it doesn't even let you do it. I don't know why. I just prefer this. So, Oh, also the HSG 216 came with a bag. It also has the mulch plugs over there. So, Yeah, um... I guess I'll, I'll try and give you guys some action of these two, hopefully soon if I can. Uh, yeah, so it's July 2nd, 2021, today on Friday, I believe. This right here is where I call it the Honda Closet. Right here, I call this the Honda Closet. Because that's where I keep the HRM215. This is the only mower I have not featured in my cold stuff video because I'm gonna show you. The, oh, oh, I can't because it's it's way back there. But I don't know if you can see that. If you see that little circle right there, that is the blade adapter that was on the HRM 215. So what happened was when I was using that stupid hard before torque wrench. I told the bolt to 36 40 foot pounds, I think. But then somehow, one bolt, I stripped it in the blade after. So I had to get new blades, but as soon as I got new blades, we had to put the blade on, the blade after on first, but we had to tap it out and drill it while the blades are on the adapter so that the... Uh, this bigger size bolt uh, would fit on there. And when you start that thing up, I actually started that thing up once with it like that and that thing it was shake it was shake so badly like this thing was shake very badly and you can't cut grass at it because it's vibrating like that as the blades are not tight even though they almost are but they're not and yeah so i don't know if i'm gonna get a new blade adapter for it because i have to get two things for this if i'm gonna Get this thing running mow some grass with it i mean even though it is still a push mower though but it can still be used the mow lawn so 
the only the two things that we need is just a new blade adapter and new blades the blade adapter is like 40 50 dollars the blades are like 25 30 dollars so yeah, that was just stupid so anyway that is just my update video my july update video i will try and do a long time video soon hopefully i'll do one maybe either tomorrow or sunday i'm thinking about sunday morning which is july 4th on independence day and i might feature the 2004 long breed 10550 even though it doesn't shut off but i can still use it though just just for this week because i haven't featured it uh this year my long time videos and i might also feature the toro uh 51938 gas trimmer hopefully if it, uh, runs a little better. Uh, yeah, I'll just, yeah, so the mower would be the Lombri 10550, and the trimmer would be the Toro 50938 gas trimmer. The, I don't know if I'll, I don't think I might not feature an edging video, or, yeah, I'm probably not going to feature edging. I'm just going to, I'm not sure what kind of blow I'll use, but... Just uh, let me know what kind of blower you want me to use, and I'll uh, uh, feature it. All right, so see you guys.